This is an introductory painting exercise similar to the ones I do in my courses. This particular exercise has one important goal, which is learning how to simplify. When first learning how to paint, it can be very daunting to tackle even the most basic subject. One of the first lessons to learn in painting is how to simplify what you're seeing. Simplifying can mean many different things depending on the painter's interests. In essence, the way that a subject is simplified is determined by the focus of one's observations, what one chooses to include, and what one chooses to exclude. For this particular painting, the aim is to convey the subject with minimal color and detail and still get a sense of light and shadow and three-dimensional form. The variations in color are following a tonal palette. Colors are darkened or dulled down with a complement, and they are lightened with white. Although I may see subtle colors and tones, I'm going to initially ignore them and reduce what I see into two tones for each color. Let's start. Here's a photo of the subject that I'm working on. Keep in mind that I'm not working from the photo, but from observation of the subject in front of me. I will, however, refer to this photo as I go through the painting process. I first start by sketching out the composition onto the canvas. The drawing is begun with some basic geometric shapes. This makes it easy to get the different proportions quickly in place. I'm drawing with a small round brush and paint. The paint is thinned out considerably with mineral spirits until it has a consistency similar to watercolor. This allows the paint to flow freely from the tip of the brush. I felt that the composition was too close to the right side of the canvas, so I've decided to move it further to the left. The initial drawing is erased by liberally applying mineral spirits to it. A soft dry cloth is then used to remove the excess mineral spirits and dry the canvas so that the drawing can begin again. After the geometric proportions are put into place, I refine them into a contour drawing. The final drawing is reinforced with slightly darker paint. Now I will begin to study the colors in order to figure out how to translate them into mixtures of paint. Before colors are squeezed out onto the palette, I will survey the composition one element at a time. For each area of the composition, I want to be able to name the color and find a corresponding mixture of paint. I will look at the hue, the level of saturation, and then the tone. I'm looking for the simplest means of conveying what I see. I will start by mixing a corresponding color for each element of the composition, that is, light and shadow for each area. Here are the colors that I've mixed to start the painting. Let's go over them, making reference to the image. Starting with the background, what I see is a dullish red-orange. This means a complementary mixture is needed. This can be cadmium orange and its complement ultramarine blue, but an alternative is to start with an already dull red-orange, such as burnt sienna. In order to lighten the burnt sienna, I add cadmium orange. The more cadmium orange that I add to the sienna, the lighter it gets, but this also increases the saturation. This color mix can be further lightened with white. The foreground color is a deep red, which has a little orange in it. It is dull and fairly dark relative to the pears and vase. It's somewhere between alizarin crimson and cadmium red. Alizarin can be dulled down with its complement thalo green, but this mix will also cool alizarin significantly. The red that I see, however, is fairly warm in the light areas. Since I have burnt sienna on my palette, and it is a dull, dark, red-orange, I will mix this with the alizarin to see how it works. It seems to do the job quite well, at least on my palette. When I start to paint, however, I may have to adjust it. I'll wait to see how it relates to the other colors on the canvas before I can be completely certain. The vase is a dull blue that tends towards violet. Ultramarine is a blue that has a slight violet cast. In order to dull ultramarine blue, I'll add its complement, cadmium orange. A touch of white will allow me to see the mix better in order to determine if it is too gray or too saturated. The two tones are mixed out. The lighter one simply has more white in it. The pears are yellow with a hint of green. This color is also slightly dull. 
Cadmium yellow light, when mixed with dioxazine violet, creates a dulled out yellow with a slight greenish cast to it. I will also add just a touch of ultramarine blue to make it slightly more greenish. The lighter version of this color has more cadmium yellow, the darker version has more violet. I start painting by testing key colors in relation to one another. I begin with the background orange tones, placing them close to the vase. I then tentatively lay down the light and shadow tones for the vase and pairs. I notice right away that the tone of blue representing the light of the vase is too dark. The other colors seem to work, but I won't know for sure until I've laid them in. The white of the canvas can be quite distracting. It also has a tendency to make all the colors seem dark in comparison to it. Before I continue to paint, I adjust the colors on my palette. Here is the adjusted palette with lighter blues for the vase and an extra light tone for the pair. First adjust the light of the vase with the lighter tone of blue-gray. As I continue to paint, I'm focusing on how each color and its corresponding tone conveys the shape, light, and shadow of the different elements of the composition. Notice that the areas of light versus shadow are clearly articulated. I will also leave a bit of separation between each different color area. This allows me to make adjustments as the painting progresses. The paint is applied using a dry brush. Color is lightly scrubbed into the canvas, creating a thin layer of paint. The paint itself has a touch of painting medium to increase the flow, but not enough to make the surface too slick. A drier painting surface will be easier to work on as the painting evolves. Now that the canvas is completely covered and there is no white left, except along some edges, I can step back and take a look at the painting as a whole and decide how to continue. I'm looking at the tonal relationships of each element and how each element relates to the whole. Is there a strong sense of light and shadow? Are the shapes well rendered? It is important that the painting as a whole works at this stage. If not, I will make adjustments before I continue to refine it. It seems to work, so now I can move on to the next stage. In this next stage, I'm focusing on how to further refine the shapes and tones. In order to do so, I first add some more tones onto my palette. I start by darkening the shadow of the background and the shadow of the vase. I've added a slightly lighter tone on the lower part of the vase to represent the way that light bounces off the table surface and reflects back into the vase. Next, I strengthen the shadow in the pair with a darker tonal mix of yellow, violet, and blue. I don't want to leave the pairs with the striated shadow contours. I gently blend the shadows of the pairs. Notice how the pair no longer looks like a flat cutout. I now turn my attention to the vase. I strengthen the shadow areas with the darker blue-gray mixture and I lighten the upper belly of the vase. The initial shadow contour is refined to follow the shape of the shadow as it curves around the vase. I then blend the contour that separates the light and shadow tone to create a softer transition. Finally, I add a stronger light on the upper belly of the vase. The left pair reflects some of its yellow onto the shadow of the vase. In order to get this color, I mix some of the dull yellow used for the pair into the shadow tone of the vase. The result is the faint greenish circle that you see. In the lower part of the vase, I see some of the red of the foreground reflecting up into it. To get this color, I take some of the red tone for the foreground and mix it into the blue shadow tone of the vase. I can now take a step back and look at the painting as a whole. How do the tonal relationships work? Are the contrasts strong enough? Do the objects have a well-articulated sense of light and shadow? I think that they do. The aim of the painting was to simplify what I observe in the still life into a basic relationship of light and shadow and yet still create a sense of three-dimensional form. All of these elements are in place and the composition works together as a whole. I can, at this point, decide that the painting is finished. But I feel that there's something missing and that I can push it a little bit further. The light and shadow can be enhanced by strengthening the contrasts. The pairs are somewhat dull and lifeless. 
They don't seem to have enough weight. They're not really sitting down on the tabletop. The vase, I think, can also be a bit brighter. Starting with the pears, I want to strengthen their shadows, and I've decided to add the red foreground that reflects up into them. I conspicuously ignored this detail in the early stage of the painting. Some of the dull orange is mixed with the pear shadow tone to get the color of the reflected light into the pear. Looking more closely at the way the light falls on the pears, I decide to add lighter tones onto my painting. I've also strengthened the red shadow under the pears. I'm now focusing more and more on the details. The details that I'm looking at are relative to the way light and shadow shapes the pear. I'm not, however, looking at the minute details. The next step is to once again soften the areas of color that I've added by gently blending the tones into the shadow and in the light. I also blend the contour between the light and shadow. The final details of the pears are added, the bright highlights. I want to briefly mention that my application of paint and my brush strokes are not as broad and sweeping as in the initial stages of the painting. As I zero in on specific areas of the painting, I'm more careful about how I apply the paint. Feeling more satisfied with the way the pears look, I can now tend to other parts of the painting. I'm now looking at the background and foreground and considering how they relate to the objects. I find that although the light and shadow are very strong, they may be too strong. I think that they draw too much attention from the center of interest. I decide to slightly darken the areas that represent the light, and I soften the shadow contours by slightly blending them into the light areas. The effect seems to make the objects stand out more. In other words, I've drawn attention away from the background and foreground. They are now there to support the center of interest rather than compete with it. Surveying the composition, now I'm fairly satisfied with it but it still seems a little flat. I decide that there needs to be a little bit more light added, perhaps to give a sense of space between the objects and the background. I add some lighter orange onto the background, to the right of the vase and pear, and just to the left of the upper part of the vase. I also decide that the red of the foreground can be lightened. The final touches are added. A bit more bright orange in the background, stronger highlights on the pear, and finally, the stems.